Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we're still looking at pure substance problems for thermodynamics, and our problem statement reads, A piston cylinder device contains 0.6 kilograms of steam at 200 degrees Celsius and 0.5 megapascals. Steam is cooled at constant pressure until one half of the mass condenses. We are to show the process on the TV diagram, temperature specific volume diagram, find the final temperature, and determine the volume change. Okay, so as I always say in these problems, what we need to do is identify at least two properties of a given state so that we can completely define the state, at least in terms of thermodynamic properties. Right, so in the first state, we have 200 degrees Celsius and 0.5 megapascals. So we have temperature and pressure, it's completely defined, all good. Now for the second state, it's a constant pressure process, so therefore we also know the pressure in the second state, which is also 0.5 megapascals. Now, the other thing we know is that, one, we're going to cool this guy down, or we're going to take it down so that we, yeah, we're cooling it. And we're cooling this guy down until half of the mass condenses. If half of the mass condenses, we know that half of the mass is going to be in the form of liquid. The other half is going to be in the form of vapor. So that tells us that the quality, we call X, is going to be 50%, correct? So quality is going to be 50%. And that is um, the other piece of the puzzle that we need for a second state to be able to completely define it. And so if we were to draw the way I like to do in my little boxes, the two states. Okay, so I have state one over here. State one, we're dealing with water on both states. Um, what we're doing is, let me just copy this. Um, state two. So on the first state, we're given that this guy is at 200 Celsius, and it's at 0.5 mega Pascals, right? And then from here to second state, we're losing some energy or some energy, some heat is going away from our system, out of our system. And then we have, we don't know the temperature, but we know the pressure is also 0.5 because it's a constant pr pressure process. And we also know the quality is 50%. I have 50% of the mass in the form of liquid, 50% of the mass in the form of vapor. And that's pretty much all I need, right? So to be able to, um, to draw the diagram, we can draw the diagram, you know, to, to have a sketch with the information we have. Uh, and then we can add more information once we determine these other things here. All right, so what is this going to look like? We have temperature over here, and we have specific volume on this axis. Okay, and we know there's the dome. Let's do the dome in blue. Okay, stone here. Anything over here is going to be a compressed liquid or sub subcooled liquid. Over here we have a saturated mixture, and over here we have a superheated vapor. So in this case here, we know that we are ending, right? So you know, we're going to do, let's just do a, a line here for our, oops, that was too much. Let's just do a line here for our, we'll do it so that I'm touching the, well, there you go. So this is going to be my 0.5 megapascal line, right? So anything in this dotted line that I'm drawing is at the same pressure of 0.5 megapascals, okay? And we know we have to be in this line because it's all the same pressure throughout the whole system. Now, in the first case, um, we're going to be either somewhere here or somewhere here, right? Because we know that we had, oh, actually, we don't know that. We, we have to be anywhere on this region here because we just know it's going to be more than 50-50. And we know we're going to end up over here, right in the middle, dead center, right? Why is it dead center? Because that is a point at which half of the mass is liquid, half of the mass is vapor. Okay, so we take these these two points here, we get the, the midpoint, that's going to be the where the quality is 50%. Now, to be able to determine the first point, you know, the ballpark of the first point, we don't know whether it's here, 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 or here. To do that, we need to define our first states in terms of whether it's a superheated fluid or a saturated mixture. So I'm going to go into my property tables. Property tables are down below in the description if you need them. Uh, and I'm going to look for in the, table, in the temperature table, 200 degrees Celsius, and then look at what is the pressure. And then just to remind you, if my pressure is greater than 5 megapascals, then I have a subcooled liquid or a compressed fluid. If I have, uh, if it's exactly at 0.5, then that means if my, if my pressure, my vapor pressure is exactly 0.5, I mean to have a saturated um, mixture. And if my pressure is below 5 megapascals, I have a superheated fluid, superheated fluid. Okay, so we go here to temperature table for water, and I'm looking for 200 Celsius, and there here it is. 
and my pressure is the second column here is this is in kilopascals, right? Yeah, in kilopascals. Okay, so that's going to be one point five, right? So one point five. Simplify this. One point five megapascals. So that means that the vapor pressure, right, the 1.5, is greater than P1. Right? In other words, 1. Point, uh, what is it, 0. 0.5 is smaller than 1.5 megapascals. So therefore, we conclude this is a superheated fluid. Okay, when you're grabbing properties off this, this is where you're going to read things. Okay? So if you're going to grab enthalpy, uh, entropy, etc., you're going to read it off. But there's another way to do, come to this conclusion, and for some people it's more intuitive. So we can, what we can do is we can scroll down all the way until we go to the pressure table. Pressure table. And then here what I'm going to be looking at is I'm going to be looking for the 0.5 megapascals, right, that we have in our system. And then if my temperature is above that, then I have a superheated fluid, right? So it's more intuitive in the terms of superheated uh, than looking at the pressure. Okay, so you can see here this is 500 kilopascals. And that's the same thing as 0.5 megapascals. And the saturated temperature is 151 degrees Celsius. We are at 200. So because 200 is greater than 151, we are sure we are at a superheated state. Okay? So for the conclusion, both of them work. If you were to grab properties, you want to use a temperature table instead of the pressure table just because um, your error is going to be smaller. Okay? Uh, so that conclusion allows us to now come back into our drawing. And now we're sure we're here somewhere. Okay, and where exactly just depends on where the 200 is, and I can put the 200 wherever I want. And I'm just going to put it over here. So that's my state one. So state one is over here. State two is over here. So I can draw beforehand this guy here. Okay. okay. What else do I know? Well, I, now I know what this um, temperature is too, right? Because we just saw this was 151.80 something, right? So, so I can put that detail in there. Um, you know, the graph is good as is. You can leave it at that. If you want to complete it further, you need to put specific volume here and specific volume here. And to do that, we need to calculate it. So that's the, you know, the next tasks we have ahead of us. So part A is all good. Part B, find the final temperature we just did, right? 150. One point, what was it? 83. Don't forget. Let's go back to the table. Yeah, point 83. And then we know that's the final temperature because we are at 0.5 megapascals the whole time, and we know the second state is a saturated mixture, right? Because it has 50-50, so it has to be saturated mixture. Because it has to be saturated mixture, the temperature has to be the saturation temperature, okay? So 151.83 is the answer for part B. Degrees Celsius. Okay, and then finally, what is the volume change. So to be able to find the volume change, I need to relate that to my specific volume, right? So let's think about what we're looking at here. What we want to determine on part C is what is V2 minus V1, right? Which is the delta V, right? Well, we know already that my V2 is smaller than my V1. Now you can look at the graph and that tells us that. So this is going to be a negative number. We know that already. To be able to determine exactly what that is, we need to relate back what are our specific volumes. So remember that specific volume is simply the volume divided by the mass. The volume divided by mass. The mass we happen to know, it's been given from the start, is 0.6 kilograms. So all we need to do is, if we want to find what is value for volume 1, all we need to do is multiply the mass by a specific volume 1. This is 0.6, we know that, kilograms. We don't know this as of yet, but we can find out, right? Because we have this state completely defined, we just go back to the table and grab the specific volume. I'm going to have to go all the way to the superheated table, right? Because we've, as we've seen, this is a superheated state. So pressure table, pressure table, and there you go, superheated. Okay, superheated water. What am I looking for here? Well, 0.5 megapascals and the 200 Celsius, right? So 0.5 megapascals is right here. And then 200 is here. And note that we are exactly 200, so we can grab the properties off this line here. Specific volume is the first one, if I'm mistaken. Yes, it is. So our specific volume for state one is 0.42503. Okay, so that is, we can grab it straight off and feed that back into our, into our uh, equation there to find out what's the volume of this state. So this would just be my 
point six sine is a point forty two uh, five oh three. Okay, rid of this. So my, my volume one, let me see what my volume one is about 0 0.255 meters cubed. Okay, beautiful. Now that we have that, all we need to do is find um, V2 now, right? and we're going to do V2 exactly the same way. Right? We're looking at the definition of specific volume. The mass is the same, no mass has left our system. So therefore, my volume two is just going to be my specific volume two times the mass. Again, the mass 0.6, we know. Specific volume two, we need to calculate. How do we do that? Well, we go back to our temperature table. Remember that. Um, remember that um, the second state is defined as having a 0.5 megapascal pressure and 50/50 in relationship to liquid and vapor. Right. This is the saturated liquid value. This is the oops, the saturated vapor value right here. Okay. So in other words. If we were to have 100% of liquid, this would be our specific volume. If we were to have 100% of vapor, this would be our specific volume. Because we have 50-50, I'm going to get 50% of this, 50% of this, combine the two, that's going to be my specific volume. So specific volume 2 will be equal to 50% of my 0 0.00193 plus 50% of 0.374. Right, and we can obviously we generalize this generally when we're doing this for uh, other problems. We just generalize saying that if it's a mixture, it's going to be the quality, right, which is the, the amount of vapor we have, time specific one for the saturated vapor, sat vapor, plus whatever is not vapor, which has to be liquid, times specific volume for the saturated liquid. Okay? So in this case, it happens to be 50%, so this is also 50%. <clears throat> so I got my uh, specific volume to be about. Uh, 0.1879, and approximate that to 0.88, I guess, 0.88. So let's just go back to where we were here. This is going to be my 0 0.1879, 6, that's good enough, times 1.6 kilograms. I'm multiplying meters cubed per kilogram times kilograms. So I'm getting out meters cubed as my final uh, number. I'm calculating volume. Volume two, and my volume two ends up being about 0.113. Remember that this guy has to be smaller than the other ones, or else we did something wrong, and it is indeed right. So 0.1 versus 0.2. Now for the fun part, we just subtract two, and we get that this is about negative. Um, so we do 0.113 minus 0.55 we had, and we get this is a negative 1.42 meters cubed, and that is our answer right there for part C. Okay, so that does it for this problem. What you can do now, if you wanted to, if you wanted to make this, you know, complete this up even more, what we can do here is on this V1, that is a superheated one, this one we found out to be, what was that, 0.42 something, uh, 0.425, so 0.425, and that's in meters cubed per kilogram. And over here, V2, that's the mixture between the two, and we found out to be 0 0.18, just round it up to 8.8. Yeah, there you go. So that is a you know complete graph of what's happening. We are leaving the superheated zone at 200 Celsius and 0.42 specific volume. And then we're cooling this guy down at a constant pressure process. So always following this constant pressure line here and then stopping halfway when we have condensed half of the mass, the other half is still in vapor form. And then at this point here, our temperature is 151.8 degrees Celsius, and our specific volume is about 1.88 meters cubed per, per kilogram. Okay, I hope this made sense. If you have any questions, just leave them down below in the comment section. If this helped you out, consider liking the video, and we'll talk soon.